Hi, my friends. Today, I want to present you a new story. Enjoy watching it. The hum of the airplane engines was a faint whisper compared to the weight that pressed down on Surgeon Percival Walton's shoulders. After months of relentless deployment, every muscle in his body felt like it was on fire. As he shuffled down the narrow aisle, his eyes fell upon the plush comfort of first class, a surprising upgrade from his original seat and coach. Percival sank into the luxurious leather, its softness a stark contrast to the hard benches of military barracks. The flight attendant, a young woman with a cheerful smile, approached him. Welcome to first class, surgeon. Can I get you anything to start? Just a water, please, Persaipo replied, his voice hoarse from the exhaustion of travel. He glanced around, trying to feel at ease among the well-dressed passengers who seemed to ignore his presence. The calm was shattered when a sharp, authoritative voice cut through the air. Excuse me, that's my seat. Percival looked up to see a woman impeccably dressed in a designer suit, her eyes cold with indignation. I'm sorry, but this is my assigned seat, he said, showing her his ticket. I've been upgraded. The woman's lips curled into a dismissive sneer. This is preposterous. You're a soldier. You should be in coach, not here. This seat is for someone who pays for first class. Before Percival could respond, the flight attendant intervened. Is there a problem here? This soldier is in my seat, the woman insisted, her voice rising with frustration. The attendant remained composed. Sergeant Walton's seat is indeed in first class. Thank you for your service, Surgeon. Ma'am, your seat is 5A, just a few rows back. The woman's face flushed with anger and embarrassment, but she mumbled a curt thanks and retreated to her seat, leaving a palpable tension in her wake. Percival sank back into his chair, feeling a mix of relief and discomfort. His brief respite had been mired by an encounter that felt all too familiar, a clash between entitlement and duty. As the plane began its ascent, Percival stared out the window, reflecting on the disheartening reality of prejudice he faced, even amidst the luxury of first class. The plane soared through the clouds, but Sergeant Percival Walton's thoughts were grounded by the encounter he had just experienced. The luxurious surroundings of first class did little to lift his spirits. He absently traced patterns on the armrest, his mind replaying the woman's harsh words and the flicker of disdain in her eyes. The flight attendant, noticing his preoccupation, approached with a sympathetic smile. Everything all right, surgeon? Just trying to shake off a rough start, Percival replied, his voice tinged with weariness. The upgrade was meant to be a pleasant surprise but it's turned into a reminder of some old battles. The attendant nodded knowingly. It's unfortunate when people let their biases cloud their judgment. I'm sorry you had to deal with that. As Percival glanced towards the woman, Joel Wilcox, now seated a few rows back, he saw her stealing glances in his direction. Her irritation was palpable, her posture rigid. Each look felt like a sharp jab, a reminder that prejudice still lurked in the most unexpected places. The man sitting next to Joella leaned over and whispered, Is everything okay? Joella, her voice low but laced with tension, responded, It's nothing, just a misunderstanding. Her Percival's heart sank. It wasn't just the confrontation. It was the realization that despite his service, respect was still conditional, overshadowed by bias. He wanted to confront the issue, to speak out but he knew that escalating the situation would only worsen the discomfort for everyone involved. As the flight continued, the atmosphere seemed to shift. Jawless displeasure was now coupled with a lingering sense of guilt. Percival could only hope that the space between them, filled with unspoken words and shifting glances, would eventually bridge the gap created by her initial prejudice. As the plane leveled off and the seatbelt sign dimmed, Sergeant Percival Walton sat in a reflective silence. The stinging words of Joella Wilcox still echoed in his mind, mingling with the hum of the engines. He knew he couldn't let the encounter fester. He needed to address it in a way that might make a difference. Reaching into his bag, Percival pulled out a small worn notepad and a pen. He hesitated for a moment, considering the right words to bridge the chasm created by their earlier clash. With a deep breath, he began writing, pouring his thoughts into the note with meticulous care. Dear Ms. Wilcox, he started, his handwriting steady but tinged with emotion. I understand that our encounter was uncomfortable, and I hope to address it. As a soldier, 
I'm proud of my service and the freedoms I've protected. However, I also understand that my presence in first class may have been surprising. I've seen the sacrifices made by many and carry their memory with me. My hope is that we can all look beyond our differences and see each other's shared humanity. He folded the note neatly and flagged down the flight attendant. Could you please deliver this to the woman who was seated in 5A? He asked. The attendant, her eyes filled with empathy, accepted the note with a nod. A few moments later, Joella's eyes widened as she read the note, her face shifting through a spectrum of emotions. She glanced up, searching for Percival, her expression softening with a mixture of remorse and contemplation. The note's impact was evident as she reread the words, her earlier irritation melting away. Percival watched from his seat, hoping the message would spark the understanding he yearned for. He leaned back, waiting for a resolution, aware that sometimes the smallest gestures held the power to transform even the deepest divides. As the flight continued, Joella Wilcox's gaze remained fixed on the note Percival had written. Her initial irritation had given way to a deeper contemplation, her thoughts swirling with the weight of her own past. The plane's steady hum was interrupted by Joella's deliberate steps as she approached Percival. The once rigid demeanor had softened, her expression now held vulnerability. Sergeant Walton, she began, her voice hesitant yet sincere. I wanted to thank you for the note. It made me reflect on things I've been struggling with. Percival looked up, surprised but attentive. I'm glad it reached you. I only wanted to bridge the gap between us. Joella took a deep breath. I realize now that my reaction was unfair. I made assumptions based on my own biases. My father served in Iraq and didn't come back. Seeing you in uniform stirred up a lot of unresolved grief and misplaced anger. Percival's eyes softened. I'm sorry for your loss. I understand how difficult it must be to relive that pain. Joella nodded, her eyes glistening. Thank you for your understanding. Your note made me see beyond my own prejudices and reminded me of the common humanity we all share. Percival extended a hand. It takes courage to acknowledge when we're wrong. I appreciate your honesty. Joella shook his hand, her grip firm yet apologetic. As they returned to their seats, both felt a profound shift. The flight, once a battleground of prejudice, had transformed into a shared moment of understanding. As the plane began its descent, Sergeant Percival Walton and Joella Wilcox found themselves seated next to each other once again. The earlier tension had dissipated, replaced by a tentative but genuine connection. Joella turned to Percival, her expression now open and warm. I've been thinking, she said, her voice softer than before. We've been through quite a day. I'd like to get to know you better if you're open to it. Percival nodded, smiling. I'd like that. Sometimes, a difficult start leads to unexpected friendships. Jawless eyes brightened. I found out we have a lot in common. I'm passionate about supporting veterans' causes. It's something I started doing after my father's death. That's admirable, Persival replied. I'm involved in similar work. It's a way to honor those who serve and help others. As they shared stories about their experiences and mutual interests, the flight attendants began preparing for landing. Joella handed Percival a card. Here's my contact information. If you're ever in town, let's connect. I'd love to continue our conversation. Percival accepted the card with gratitude. I'd like that very much, and thank you for reaching out. It's not often that a difficult moment turns into a meaningful connection. As they disembarked, they walked together toward the gate, exchanging final words of encouragement. The encounter had begun with discord but ended in a shared understanding a testament to the power of compassion and the potential for growth in even the most unexpected situations.